Hey guys, in this video, let us learn to work with the list of strings in a Spring Boot Data JPA application. That is, let us discuss how to persist a property of type list of string or set of string in a Spring Boot Data JPA application. Let us jump into the project directly. I have created the application already and I have done the initial setup that is needed to discuss our topic. So the domain model here is student. It has got few properties, name, student ID, which will be auto generated, department and emails, which is of type set of string. This is the topic of discussion for us. How to persist the set of string in the database. If the set is of user defined type, say for example, set of address, set of course, then you need to go in for association mapping. That is, you can use either one to many or many to many annotation above this particular instance variable. In our case, we are having a set of string. So, we have to use an annotation called at element collection. The moment you add at element collection above this particular instance variable, the data JPA will create another table with the name student underscore emails. The columns of that table will be the student ID and the value of the email. So, if you want to persist a set of string or a list of string, then you can go in for at element collection. I have done the complete setup needed for the application. Here I have the service. In the service layer, I have added two methods, add student and get all. It is implemented properly in the service IMPL, the student repository extends JPA repository. Now coming to the main class, the main class implements command line runner. Let us auto wire i student service. Now let us create the student object. I am having a parameterized constructor. So let me pass the name, department and set of emails. New hash set of. This hash set takes collection as parameter. So I can pass arrays dot as list by passing the mail id. Let me pass two mail ids. Okay. Now let me pass the last parameter as emails and call student service dot add student by passing the student object. Okay. Now in application dot properties I have given DDL auto as create. Now let me save this and run the application. Now here you can see that the tables that are getting generated. One is the student table. The other one is student underscore emails table. Student underscore sequence. This is for the auto generated ID. And see the columns that are there in student underscore emails. It is student underscore student underscore ID. Which is nothing but the student ID and the value of the email. Let us check this from MySQL command line. You can see the tables that are generated. Student, student underscore email, student underscore sequence. Let me describe student, describe student underscore emails, student underscore student underscore ID and emails. Let us just use select star from student. The ID here starts with 50 because we have given it as the initial value in the sequence generator. Let us check for student underscore emails also. Here you can see it is student underscore student underscore id and the value of the email. What if I want to give my own table name and my own column name? For that we need to add one more annotation. Let me go to the student class together with the element collection add at collection table. Import it. Let us add the attributes. Name. Name indicates the name of the junction table. Let me give it as student underscore email just to differentiate. Earlier it was student underscore emails. Comma. The second attribute is join column. This join column points to the primary key of the table. So in our case it has to point to the student ID. Let me add this in the second line. At join column name equal to student underscore id. Earlier it was student underscore student underscore id. Now I am changing it so that the column name will be simple. It is just student underscore id. Let me save this. I will relaunch the application. Our DDL auto is created. So all the tables will be dropped and created again. 
Now you can see the new table name is student underscore email and the column names for this particular table is student underscore id and emails. Let me just come back here. Show tables. This is the older table that was generated earlier. This is the new table name that we have given for the junction table. So now let us give select star from student underscore email. The column name is changed to student underscore id. And the second column represents the value of the email. And the second column gives the value of the email. Now let us try adding one more student object. I will go to application.properties. Change create to update. Come to the main class. And change it to Joe. Joe or Gmail. Let me relaunch the application. Here it is continuing with the flow of the application. The new student object is getting inserted together with the email values. Let us check it out in the table. Student underscore email. And also student. Finally, we will try printing all the student objects. Student service dot get all dot for each. Use method reference system dot out double colon print in. Save all. In this case, one student has many emails. Because it is a list, the fetch type will be lazy. So this will throw an exception. Let us see the exception first and then modify the application. Here you can see the exception, lazy initialization exception. Fail to lazily initialize a collection of values. Now we will go and add the fetch type. Go to the student class. At element collection. Fetch equal to fetch type dot eagle. Save all. Run the application again. Now you will get the proper output. You are getting the list of students together with their emails. That's all. Thank you.